Welcome to the Squirrel Tail and my coverage of the 2024 Kempton Gunmakers Fair. I'm here with John Dewalt. If you're familiar with the channel, you've seen him on here before, and he is the event director of the Kempton Gunmakers Fair. Uh, the, the Gunmakers Fair, we're in our third year. Uh, we're still having great success. We actually have more vendors and more people in the Midway this year. Uh, we've made some uh, sign changes and food changes and uh, you know continue to grow. This is uh, still four organizations involved, Jacobsburg Historical Society, the NMLRA, uh, the Honorable Company of Horners, the Pennsylvania Federation of Black Powder Shooters. But it's, it's, it's over 74 vendors that we have that, here this year. Um, the attendance too is up from last year uh, and, and we had great weather which really really helped you know. If, if it was still being held at Dixon's it would be the 40th year but it's only three years for us. Yes yeah, so three years for this but the 40th counting the... The, the 40th gun makers fair counting the ones that took place at Dixon's. Which is incredible. Yeah 37 years and you know I, I never thought you know 37 years ago when I was when I was working with Bill Kennedy in the lower tent, uh, I was I was not an artisan then. I, I wasn't part of the, the armor company orders or any organization then. And, you know, I just traveled to the shoots with my dad. Never did I think, you know, that this would grow this big. Nor would I still be involved in something this big. Um, the preservation of the muzzleloading culture is what drives me. Uh, passing the education forward to younger generations so that culture itself and the the artisan work do doesn't end. Even after leaving and going to the military and coming back, the influence of this culture drew me in to make powder horns and join the Honorable Company of Horners and uh, participate in the NMLRA. And Pencil I'm a member of the Pennsylvania Federation as well. Um, I also give classes with uh, Frank Willis, you know, advanced horn classes. It it's amazing how the culture does draw you in. And uh, when once the bug bites you, it never lets go. And that, that's a wonderful thing in this event, you know, the thing that I love about it, you can see at, at the top tier people, the top collections. Some of the best of the best are here and you can get any, anything from a stock blank to an under rib to a pair of shoes to clothing, chairs, fractor art, uh, judging competition that was started at, at uh, uh, the Dixon's uh, Gunmakers Fair has continued here with Frank Willis at the helm. Uh, and Mike Carcalla for the guns. Uh, Matt Harshbarger works with him, Carl Landis works with him. We have a, a great panel of judges with Frank Willis and it, it, uh, it's not a first, second, and third place. Every item that could be entered is judged on the uh, quality of the work of each individual and potentially every item that is entered into the accoutrement section could potentially win a ribbon if it meets that quality. Uh, so, it, and the critique sheets are worth more than the ribbon. These judges are, you know, uh, have many, many years of experience in, the, in every aspect of accoutrements, and it, it's a, a review of your work, and it, it, it gives you the positives, and it also shows you maybe some room for improvement. And I see uh, entrants that, you know, made entries at nine, ten years old, still making entries twenty years later. So yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool to see. And I am hopefully going to have a video where I will so stay tuned for that where I take my last three year critique sheets and maybe even I'll try to pull one up from 10 years ago. Right. And I'm going to try to see and you can maybe see the progression. I, I did that too. You know, the first time I entered a, an item at Dixon's was a, was a horn cup that was engraved. And uh, I think it would be 13, 14 years later, I remade that cup just to see what the progression was, you know. It, it never got entered. I was a judge at that point. I just wanted to remake it. The other thing I'd like to touch on is the seminars here. <clears throat> you know, it, it's there, there's seminars from basic construction of, of horns and guns to, um, in the blacksmith's area, also do demonstrations uh, on forging a barrel, forging knives, uh, making a cherry. So if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a bit you know to, to work on guns everything was hand forged in, in the 17th 18th century culture like that um, there's also uh, uh, seminars on uh, different uh, regional uh, styles and cultures of horn work of gun work um, even, there's even uh, there's there's seminars on uh, uh, loom weaving 
finger weaving. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And the idea is, is to educate people about that and maybe again garner their interest. <clears throat> the other the other thing is, uh, I I can't I couldn't have done this without the most wonderful crew that I have with me. But that crew wouldn't be what it is without our volunteers. We have over 150 volunteers that work with us to put this show on, and they donate their time for that. And uh, it's very special to recognize them because their interest in the culture is also garnered by what we do here. So thank you very much to those volunteers. Next year we'll be here, you know, uh, uh, the full, last full weekend in July. It's not necessarily on the same uh, the dates, but it's the last full weekend in July. And uh, we'll, we'll be here ready to go again next year and hopefully have much more to offer in the years to come. And that's one of the great things about this grounds. I mean, I loved it at the Dixon store. Yes. But they pretty much had their land full. They did. Yeah, and we still have room for expansion. Uh, we're talking about having a, a music throughout the venue, uh, bringing in some uh, authors that, that write not only uh, fictional but uh, historical tales about the 17th and 18th century muzzleloading culture. Uh, there's, there's plenty of room for expansion, and, and we're hoping to do that. But what we don't want to lose is also the intimacy. Yeah of what this culture really is. It's a big family. You don't want it to turn into a general gun gun show. Absolutely not. You know, you want it to keep the core, but, you know, the fact that you can have three blacksmiths compared to actually four, four or five. five. We have five blacksmiths on site. Um, uh, we have Fisher Forge, uh, Paul Canoes down in the uh, our living history area, uh, Stephen Midkiff, Tyler Mazur, Frank Gillespie, they're all on site and they all work together and they all get along, which is phenomenal. You know, you know that it's really a great event and I'll now show you all the videos and for, that I took through it. So thank you for sitting down with me, John. Oh, you're most welcome. It was my pleasure and I'm looking forward to seeing you next year. Yes. Here they are, forge rolling a barrel together. And they will wrap that Always around. Always make sure, around the wherever you're roll. hitting, go on the end. This weekend, one of the founding organizations for the Kempton's Gunmakers Fair. Uh, we always try to live up to our role of education and uh, presentation for the public. Uh, this weekend, we're doing demonstrations of pressing horn for various aspects of horn work, not just powder horns. Uh, we'll be making some spoons. Uh, we have our different spoon molds here. We have flat horn forms to make flat powder horns. Uh, and we also have forms and molds to make gorgets. Uh, all different aspects of horn in pressing. We demonstrate from taking 
raw horn, heating the horn, pressing the horn, and putting them in their appropriate molds uh, for what we want to use out of that product. Uh, I'm Jeff Warner. I'm the president of the Pennsylvania Federation of Black Powder Shooters. Uh, we hold the state championship every year uh, for black powder shooters. Uh, this year it's in uh, the last full weekend of August in um, Altoona, near roundabout Altoona, Pennsylvania. Um, as far as the Gunmakers Fair, we're one of the four organizations that um, uh, administrate the Gunmakers Fair. Uh, specifically the Federation they, uh, does the, uh, the gates and grounds uh, and parking. Um, this will be our third year doing it. Uh, we really enjoy the event. Uh, we're, we're, we're happy to do it. gun now these were used as carried with cannon crews this is a replica a guy built and what they would do is if they were taking cannon fire they'd pull it out and then they would lay fire upon you know instead of moving their whole main can they would shoot at them with this Fires a one inch projectile there's a mold neat piece Neat replica, Revolutionary War era. So I'm in the living history section of the 2024 Kempton Gunmakers Fair. You know, you have some, she's doing some weaving here. He is making some, a wooden spoon using 18th century tools. You have the draw knife, a little bow saw, or Frame saw or bow saw? Uh, frame saw. Okay. And a carving knife. You can see some of their finished ones there. Making a, what looks to be a dovetail box. And he's cutting all the dovetails using, um, Chisels and hand tools. Yep, we'll start off with the hand tools, clean them up with knives and chisels. I'm just fitting this. This is a little tight, so it's got to be tweaked. That's a real tricky technique there, to, but they look beautiful when they're done. This is what they'll be when they're finished. And when the wood is finished, the wood is going to be the, well, it is the, the chests that are there. That's the same type of wood. And you lose your action. Uh, oh, yeah. Neat little, some neat techniques, and you know it's good that these people are keeping these techniques alive. And over here, you got a guy again doing some traditional woodworking, doing some hand mortises. And you're chiseling out a mortar, a mortise, and then he's making he has attendants here. That will fit in that piece. Pretty neat. So. Then over here, you got a little blacksmith setup. Would you mind? Uh, this is. I am recording a YouTube video. Would you mind telling us about this forge here? Sure. This is a, a quarter scale forge that would have been used uh, around the French and Indian War time. Um, they would have followed the caissons of the cannons. 
and this would have been quarter scale so the, the original bellows would have been seven to eight feet long and uh, the handles would have been five or six feet long and they come off in a yoke it would attach here for oxen so yeah it has an overhead bellows and so is this did you build this yourself yes that's pretty neat So yeah, it would have been following, you know, the military then and... Yep. So the blacksmith, the farrier, the artillery repair, and the gunsmith would have all been on the, or one or the same, on the same crew. And uh, this would have been one of the last wagons that went through behind the weekend. So did they have a separate blacksmith typically than the farrier, the farrier, or the blacksmith? The blacksmith was a farrier. Okay, so it would have been. Probably would have been a separate fellow. Okay. Unless they were making general parts like springs or whatnot. So they would have done, you know, farrier work, you know, and then they also, if need be, like repair work. They probably would have made a lot more ox shoes than than horseshoes. Okay. I had a table earlier this year. There were not there, horses were very expensive, so oxen were, you know. Uh, Towns would actually buy two or three oxen, and they would share them among everybody to plow the fields. Okay. So ox shoes were a lot more common than horseshoes. Um, as things progressed in the colonies, then, then horses became more prevalent uh, because people were making more money. But initially, um, it was mostly oxen, and uh, they'd even use dairy cows to haul things around. Wow. And then, you know, there's the rest of his setup. There's a post device and an anvil.
So I want to give a big shout out to all these people you see back there over here. To Larry there, he deserves a big shout out. You know, these are the people behind the scenes that keep the show going. People parking cars, people doing administrative work in back rooms. Without them, the show would not continue.